Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ascension uh, Parish Board of Adjustments now called to order. My name is James Cecil. At this time, roll call of members to my right, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Howard Dalton. Here. Uh, Mr. Brad Walker. Here. Mr. Kath Ms. Kathy Desideer. Here. And to my left, uh, Mr. David LeBlanc. Here. Those not in attendance tonight is Mr. Bryce Cox and Mr. Alvin Madeira. At this time, I'm going to open up the public comment period. If you're here tonight to discuss anything uh, about what's on the agenda tonight, <clears throat> pardon me, then uh, I ask that you hold that until that time the, the required by the agenda. But if you have something that you want to say, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly about the parish, now would be the time to say so. Uh, right here, sir, is a uh, sign-in sheet. Oh, you're getting an agenda? It's close. Uh, no one has anything to say? Okay, public comment period is now uh, closed. Uh, acceptance of the minutes for the August uh, 28th of 2007 meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question about item E, Zoning Review ID 1773.07. And it reads, for the commission action, Mr. Howard Dalton seconded by Mr. Brad Walker made a motion to approve the written decision of July 24. <laughs> That's not what happened. That's not what happened. No, that is not what happened. Uh, can we go ahead? Can we go ahead and revise that? Yes, we can revise that to reflect what actually happened. Uh, matter of fact, uh, that you can make that revision uh, with my uh, signed documents for my decisions. Okay. So you, she has a copy of those uh, I gave to her earlier, so you can you can base that off of that. Well, Mr. Chairman, that being said, I would move that the amendments of August 28th be accepted with that correction. Second. Okay. Uh, any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. All right, uh, the acceptance of the written decision of uh, August the 28th, the 2007, uh, 2007 meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with the, is that error on that? I didn't Check it. go that far. Let me go back to E. That is uh, going to be uh, uh, Mr. Boyd Dixon. What was that number? It doesn't give a number. Uh, 1773.07. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I move to be accepted. Second. Any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. At this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, start the variances. Uh, first on the agenda tonight is 17990.07. Uh, uh, That's for Larry and uh, Diane uh, Moran. Are they in the audience tonight? Please uh, sign in. That sign in sheet is located on the front desk. Uh, then approach the podium and, and make your statement, sir. And your statement that I'm asking is the reason for your request for variance. Yeah. Uh. I'm Larry Moran, and we have an existing building on this particular site, which is used as a daycare facility, and we're looking to add another building for gym purposes. And this is Miss Misty uh, Train that runs the uh, facility. Uh, do we have any questions by any of the board members at this particular time? Yeah. Go ahead. I remember this coming up for a variance before. Do you mm -hmm. remember what y'all came up before for? Because I don't see it in the notes. Well, we, we uh, requested to get a, a larger building there at that time, and uh, we settled to do the 4,000 square foot building. Like for the original building, you had a variance for the original yes. building yes. square footage? Right. We've had three variances total on this property. If I might. 
in that particular zoning area, they could only go 1,500 square feet, generally speaking, for a daycare facility to begin with. So the 4,000 must have been some sort of variance granted at that point That's to right. build that. Okay, is that the only one that was done, or was there something else besides that one? No, sir, I said. Well, I said since we've owned the property, and I don't know what else would. I don't know prior to his ownership either. Well, sir, I have a question. Why didn't you request for the gym when you came before this board before? This seems like you're coming back and taking little bites at us each time. Uh, I'm not, uncomfortable with yes, that. Sir. Yes, sir. Not necessarily, but we tried to get a 6,000 square foot building on the site originally, is what we tried for. Right. And uh, we come back a couple of times and it went from 6,000 to 5,000. Then we came back again and finally got approved for a 4,000 square foot building. I have no questions on this part. Do you have any further questions? Uh, the purpose if, if I may. The reason is because our area is growing and our need for child care is growing. Um, there are a few initiatives in the child care business that are coming into play. One is called the quality rating system and basically uh, Louisiana is partnering nationally with some other states and trying to basically improve the quality of ch child care in, in the area or, or across the state. Um, the facilities at each child care center are part of the quality rating system. It's going to be sort of like a, a five-star rating system for hotels and restaurants. And based on your facility, you receive quality rating systems, basically points. And so we are looking to add on the gym so that we can accomplish some of the quality rating system. <laughs> I hope that helps to answer your question. Uh, Ms. Desider, you still well, have a question? I guess my question is this. Are you adding on the gym so you can take on more children, or is the purpose of the gym going to strictly be recreation for the number of children you're already limited to in the 4,000 square foot building? Well, ultimately, we would like to take on more children because it is a, it's a two-acre piece of, of property, um, and I, I, I think that you know, with the area growing, the schools coming in, we need quality child care. We're a before and after care facility. We are not your typical daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a pre-K class in there, but we don't operate 11 and a half hours a day like a typical uh, child care facility. I want to keep that in mind, too. Okay, now, this is on two acres? No, it's, it's one acre. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, one acre. Any other further questions? So if we do the variance tonight, this is for Ron. If we do the variance tonight, they had a variance before of 2,500, I'm assuming. And so are we adding another 4,000 to that variance, or are we right. giving them a total of 6,500? No, you're actually, grant, you're actually granting a separate variance for this, and I would suggest should you grant this variance that you put some restrictions on it, and that this is to be used for a daycare gymnasium only and that that variance would expire for commercial use if this ceases to become a daycare. For okay. instance, we don't want to create a situation where we've got two 4,000 square foot basically commercial buildings on this size lot uh, should it cease to become a daycare. Well, that's based on the agreements of the applicant. Right. Uh, if, the, if, they're, if they're comfortable with that agreement, that would be a consideration, yes, sir. We have no problem with that, sir. Uh, uh, do you have plans to do anything to improve drainage upon that lot? Because it looks like the entire lot will almost be concrete. Well, Kathy, I don't think we have a, a, a water problem there. We haven't seen any. Well, the reason I'm asking is because there's another building going up right beside you. And in the last two days of rain, that lot is pretty much draining your lot and that side right next to your lot is pretty much covered in water. So what I'm asking is, is if your lot now becomes strictly concrete, your water has to go somewhere. It's not going to be absorbed in the concrete. So I'm asking what drainage that you're going to take into play if you concrete this entire lot. We're definitely going to put in drainage, yeah. Okay. You know, and, and to answer your question about the water, they, they cut that... They're locked down, you know, a whole mm -hmm. bunch to get concrete in there, of course. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they did an area that, that's hole in water right now. They didn't mm. do it exactly at level, but right. I'm sure they're going to correct that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I would I would like to point out for the for the commission's uh, information that uh, we have a new engineer who started on staff this week, Mr. Chris Ewing, who is a civil engineer and has done much of the subdivision design work that for one of the big outfits uh, that work here in the parish, and that as a commercial permit and a commercial venture, this particular project will have to go through not only our standard uh, permitting process, but that will now include review by our own engineering staff to see that the drainage and everything meets the kind of codes that we need to. He started today? He started Monday. Uh, and he will be at your next, he won't be here tonight, but he'll be at your next meeting. Okay, go ahead. Now, uh, Come. In accordance with uh, Ms. Desider's comment, whether they cut the land down or not to put the concrete on it, concrete does not absorb water. Therefore, the water that falls on this property has to go somewhere else. And also, you have an existing 4,000 square foot building, which ends in a area zoned uh, medium intensity residential. And you know, you came before us for a six thousand, you didn't get it. Came for a five thousand, you didn't get it. I would have gotten the impression that four thousand was probably the maximum I was going to get in that area, but the, with that sequence of events. And I think uh, I'll just tell you, I think an additional four thousand square feet of building space <clears throat> is inappropriate use on that piece of property, surrounded by uh, medium intensity residential. Let me go ahead and open up the public hearing. So move. Second. Anybody in the audience <clears throat> like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? Close public hearing, please. Some, uh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it just happens that their facility question could, right. could you come up and sign in, please, sir? And then uh, go ahead to the podium. It's okay. They won't throw anything at you. That's fine. Um, he didn't it sign. Just so happened need to here, sign in. I'll, I'll let him sign in afterwards. On a piece of property uh, totally unrelated to this, um, I know very well the property that they're trying to get the variance on, and it is not in any way now or ever will be residential use. It goes from Highway 73 to Airline, Post Office Road. There's only one residential area, and that's where we live in... Um, what is it? Arlington Plantation Estates. Um, the rest of that is nothing but businesses or nothing. It will never be used as residential. So. But as the law stands now, sir, to answer your question, as the law stands now, we have to decide what, and we understand that, and that goes in advisement, but you got to understand we're still zoned. Yes, I know. That, I'm just okay. saying. It just it worked out that. I mean, I didn't come here for her or whatever. I'm here for something <laughs> totally different. Well, I'm, and that's I'm, fine. I mean, I'm that's that's what the public comment period I, I, is. I mean, in light of the fact that I live directly, I'm talking about 50 yards from where she's trying to get this variant. Um, you, you live 50 yards from that piece of property? Yes. Okay. Literally. And it is not ever going to be anything other than commercial property from Highway 73 to Airline Highway. I understand everything you said, but I want you to tell me you're not in opposition of this at None all. whatsoever. Okay, so and actually you'd like to see it a bigger facility there. Uh, you would like to see that facility bigger. Is that correct? I don't see any reason why I should think otherwise. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say I want it to see it bigger. I don't see any reason why I should not want to see it bigger. Um, okay. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't see any real. Well, it's a good opportunity that I got somebody right there by the the piece of parcel yes. that we're talking and about. Say, if, if you've ever been down that stretch, there's a there's a car care center on mm -hmm. the corner, and then there's what, uh, a Chevron station on the other corner. Um, the only place that's available for residential is the condo development that I happen to live in. There's nothing there left for residential use. Okay. Thanks, sir. Um, make sure you sign in, sign please, sir. Please. Okay, close public hearing, please. Sorry, Second. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, is there any other further questions? Yeah, I, I have a couple of questions. You're talking about the quality points. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your maximum capacity of children right now? 97. Okay, and what are you wanting to increase it to? 
Well, that's based on uh, the usable square footage, what the, the state deems usable square footage. Of your uh, current building? Yes, current okay. building is 97. The proposed building, it would be whatever they would tell me. The Department of Social Services would, would yeah. qualify that. Okay, but you were talking about something about quality points, and that's where I was kind of wondering if they were given quality points based on you having enclosed play areas or, or what exactly you're referring to. The quality rating system uh, is based on the facility itself. Uh, daycares, in, to speak in daycare languages, there are centers that you must have uh, that teach children different things and um, physical activity centers that they do different things. You know, an indoor basketball would be a type of physical activity that they would seem they would see as, as a positive mm -hmm. because it's getting children you know off of the couch away from video games and playing something physical um, daycares are going to be rated based on their facility the number of children they have per teacher ratios mm -hmm. um, many many different things but this quality rating system is coming into play in Louisiana and it's based on some other states that are that are incorporating it as well Okay, but my main question still goes back to, is this going to strictly be a gymnasium, or is this going to be additional classrooms, or the usage of the building? The usage and of the, I'm sorry, the usage of this building is primarily going to be for the before and after care part of my business, which is predominantly what I am. Um, it's providing a, a place where children can go safely after school and before school for children, for parents who work. Um, and play or and play yes okay. sir that's what that's uh, I have two facilities right now I have this one on post office road and I have one on airline highway um, we have indoor basketball we we, okay. we have video games um, we have uh, computers that they can learn on diff different things like that and that's predominantly what this proposed building would be for okay now wasn't the other one uh, for after school care so are you changing that whereas this new building will be after school care and this one will be upgraded to like a full-time daycare the the one that we have now does have a pre-k system in it, a pre-k class in it just but it is predominantly before and after care okay but just a pre-k you don't have anything smaller like no we don't do so infants don't like i don't do infants and i don't yeah. do toddlers just pre-k true okay. pre-k okay any other further questions i just like to make one comment i've passed this building since we gave the initial variance and it seems like it's kept up very well i mean it doesn't seem like it's anything you know outside the norm as far as you know not adhering to like some of the standards you know for a daycare i think it's very nice i think it's a very nice daycare so i would only assume that the new building would be the same i don't see any reason why the new building wouldn't be any different right may i my daycares are very reputable uh, we have a, a very good reputation in the area um, we have a grass cutting service and a lawn care service massey services that keep up the lawn as, as you say very important to me to do that okay. uh, mr. vice chairman uh, you had a question well not a question comment uh, uh, well she talks about lawn care where there's not going to be very much of that if anything once this thing gets concreted in um, and I don't know I just feel like the proper method that this should be addressed would be a complete rezoning because to put 8,000 square feet of building on this size lot with its current zoning I view as basically spot zoning and I think it should come before the zoning planning and get the whole thing rezoned and then it can use it for strictly uh, the commercial intent which has a greater latitude and does not have to have variances. May I say something sir? Our intentions are not to use it for commercial use. You may, you may view these buildings as commercial but our intent is not to do that. It's going to stay a daycare facility and we'll put in the Whatever. Yeah, the elderly may comment that uh, if we we have the right to put restrictions on these typical buildings. So they've already also agreed uh, that they have no problem with uh, making sure that it's gymnasium and gymnasium only, for an example. Uh, I can't, I'm not making a motion now, so. Well, the only thing I would say in it, you know, technically this wouldn't be creating spot zoning. The one we I did in you. the beginning would be spot zoning, okay, because back then it was just a mobile home on this lot, you know, which was residential. You know, so us agreeing to the first one, you know, basically turned it, you know, if we weren't per se commercial, being a business, but, 
this I don't think, you know, and if you look at what side on like the gentleman said earlier, you know, post office road is not residential. You know, even if you consider maybe the uh, condos the biggest residence on it, but the rest is office space, you know, the Chevron, you know, there's the car care, there's a Austin fire and heat. There's maybe one or two. Yeah, there's two. Two down the street. So, okay. I mean, we made the first variance made it spot zoning if it, it was to be considered spot zoning. This would not change. Uh, I have a comment, which is that um, I, I just finished last year using uh, daycare and after school care for seven years. And um, I don't view a daycare or pre care as commercial. I certainly wouldn't want my children going to a daycare surrounded by bars and strip joints that are zoned commercial. I think they belong in a residential area. Uh, since this building is maintained so well, well. that's, that's going to be basically the, possibly that area might be rezoned anyhow. I think a lot of that may come up, and uh, that, I, I think that a lot of this has to be looked at periodically. And I think that that issue will probably be resolved. Uh, but they're here tonight to to make sure that they. That's they my com Mr. That's my comment in relation to this uh, appeal. Okay. No, but I'll make a motion to approve it uh, with the stipulation that it is uh, a daycare and can this variance is null void if it's not a daycare after our list. I second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor uh, to approve based on a stipulation that this particular building remains a gymnasium. Uh, I use that, that term very strictly. Associated and, with a daycare. Associated right. with the daycare and not to be used anything other than that. Mr. Chairman, sir, his exact motion was daycare. Did not he did not use? Well, I don't think in the zone we have a stipulation for gym versus daycare. No, but, the, but but here's the distinction. It's conceivable that somewhere down the line, someone would have a daycare on that piece of property right. and a for-profit gymnasium. Not likely, okay. but possible. So. Okay. So you want to make the motion that a daycare with gymnasium. A daycare, no, a, a gymnasium, gymnasium associated gymnasium. with a daycare. Okay, gymnasium associated with a daycare. Okay. We're not going to go all over that again. Second. I think everybody heard that one. Uh, we also have a second. Any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. Variance granted on the stipulation. Uh, at this time, before we move on with the agenda, I have a gentleman, uh, uh, Mr. Hulu Dumas, who uh, needs to make a statement. Uh, if you step forward, please, sir. I do have a copy of what uh, Mr. Dumas is uh, going to speak about. I don't know if, yes, you all received it. It's just going to be uh, short. Take, take 30 seconds. There you go. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, what you have before you is a draft uh, uh, new application that the um, uh, zoning uh, subcommittee generated uh, the original intent was to, uh, as currently the new application, the, the application has both zoning and board of, adjust, board of adjustment matters on the same application. We thought to separate them and make each application a little clearer. So we have before you is a draft application for you to take under, under advisement and to provide us some comments so that we can then hold a public hearing on, on the applications. And I'm sure you'll probably hold your own public hearing. And if I could walk you through it, the first page is, is generally the same as the current application. We just removed from it uh, zoning matters, so now it's strictly Board of Adjustment matters. Uh, the second one is, a, is just a documentation what the requirements have. The one that you do have has a couple of errors in it that I'd like to point out to you. One is that the survey is not required for a Board of Adjustment matters, so that, that was removed, but unfortunately we didn't do it in time, and the aerial photograph has also been removed. Um, what paragraph was that? I'm sorry? What paragraph was that? Uh, that would be 4D and 4F on okay. the second page. And the last page that you have is, is an owner's a, um, authorization. It would only be applicable in the event that the applicant was not the property owner. Uh, it is our recommendation that you wouldn't need this uh, unless the applicant was somebody other than the property owner. Um, but if, if the applicant and the property owner were one and the same, then this would be a null and void, would, wouldn't be necessary. Are you talking about the son 
compared if it's the daddy's no. property and the son wants to be the applicant, he would have to fill out this. Okay, I'm, I'm not just trying to get it straight. Right. And yes, we will take that in advisement, sir. Yeah. And uh, I will either personally get back with you uh, after communication, or we can send emails to you, which we do have your email address. Correct. Uh, on how we feel. Uh, and we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah, any comments that, that you may have on it, we'd Go appreciate ahead, it very much. I do have one quick one that you could um, take back with you. Um, under the type of request, line item four would not be worded appropriately for this board. Okay. Uh, we are not the parish zoning council, and in this situation, the parish council would not be appropriate. Oh, you mean in this form, the last form? Yes. In the owner's the, affidavit. I'm sorry. Yeah, in the affidavit. You're correct. The parish council needs to be extracted from this form. That is correct. As does the parish zoning commission, because we're right. not the zoning commission. That was a typo on the form. It was the same form used for both, and didn't realize it until after we sent it out. That's okay. We won't, we won't throw stones in. <laughs> yeah, we might. Thank you very much. Have you a good will. Thanks, Mr. Julio. Uh, moving on. I got uh, ID number 1800.07. This is for Charles and Deborah. Was it Spurgeon? Spurgeon. That's close. Uh, where is this located at? Oh, Black Bayou Road. You sign in, please, ma'am. Sir, well, uh, apply for a variance on my property. Okay, uh, and what what uh, what are you applying for? To uh, put a, a mobile home on. That's that's why I want that. Yeah. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, uh, this is the one about your brother, and, brother and, his and, daughter. and his daughter. Okay. Yes, the, yeah, I, the reason why I'm saying this for the benefit of the board. Uh, do we have any further questions? Uh, for questions for this gentleman? What's currently on the lot at right now, sir? What's currently on the lot right now? Uh, my home. I have some photographs if you need to see kind of where the mobile home's going to be. Yeah, if you Certainly. could. By all means. I don't know how to do this. Just set them on the flat piece right there. There you go. This is our home right here. And this is on the part of the property where we want to put the other mobile home. And this would be a picture of where the home would be on this part. Hmm. What size home are you talking about putting on that lot? A single wide mobile home. I think it's 16 by 80. Your brother, is he ill? Going through a divorce. Is this a financial hardship? Yes. He's going um, through a divorce. Okay. He has custody of his daughter. And we're trying to keep the daughter in the school district where she's going right now, which is central. Is this a temporary situation? Is this a permanent situation? Is there a length of time that... We don't, um, we don't have a length of time right now, but it is a temporary situation so he can find somewhere else to put it. He's been looking, but hadn't had any luck. Or, you know, until he can get established in his own life without wife. Got a question for Ron. Ron, could they technically split this lot? And do this, or being a half acre, or a little bit more than a half acre in a medium RM. 
two things. In that particular zoning area, they could have up to three residents per acre. Okay, so they could put two on this size without a problem. When you get ready to split it due to the layout of it, you know, I don't know. They'd have to go in. It, it depends on where they cut the line at. It's, it's conceivable. It's going to be tough. It would be very tough. Uh, it would probably require a variance either way. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> now, generally speaking, you have to have at least half an acre. Any further questions before I open up public hearing? Move. Second. Public hearing now open. Anybody in the audience like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? I'm sorry, gentleman and ladies' request. No one. Close public hearing, please. So moved. Second. Do you need to mention that we received. Some sort no, of that's letter on that? that's already. Okay. Yeah, that's already been taken care of. But I, but that might be a good idea just in case no one was informed because we weren't informed until this morning on your email. Uh, uh, public hearing is now closed. Uh, any. Uh, any motion, any questions, any discussion? Well, we have done similar in the past, but with a time constraint where there's financial hardship on a family. And um, I would probably be agreeable to looking at something with a time limitation involved, especially since we already have noticed that you could technically probably put two houses on a size. Uh, I don't necessarily. Well, you, you think can put at, the way right. it's the property set up now. He can legally do that. Okay. But but the thing about it is. Uh, uh, time constraints that we have in the past. Mm -hmm. I like to kind of get away from that because simply because that we don't have nobody to police it. Uh, yeah. That that's put more burden on the Central Parish, uh, having them make sure that I'm just throwing out a number here. You know, the, the, the only thing I can think of we could do to to trigger something like that is, and I don't like to do that, would be to issue some sort of temporary certificate of occupancy that mm -hmm. expires at such and such a date, but. There, there again, again that's we're opening up Pandora's box again, right. and I'd like to steer away from that if I can. I mean, you can I put mean that's my personal in. opinion, by all means. I'm not oh, telling you how to vote. Well, how about but, the camera rent it? But the comment about whether you can have two, pro two residences on this property, if this was a vacant lot, yes, you could split it. But I will almost guarantee that the current residence is on there is in the middle. Which means you really couldn't split this lot and put two residences on it, and have two say point three three acre lots. That 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 that's the, the issue is with the setbacks and and, and that type yard. of thing. Yeah. You're, you, it would be very tough to do. Yeah. It's not my home is not in the center of the It's lot. on one side. We have it we, we're not arguing against you. We, oh, yeah. we're, we're, we're just we're, trying my, to. My, my point. We're right. trying to stay even. Even see. assume you know the, the deal. In case there's some confusion, and I don't know if the council is confused, but that type of zoning, you can have three residents per acre. Per acre. Mm -hmm. So from a zoning standpoint, it's not a problem. But the other regulations are you can only have one house per lot. Mm -hmm. and that's why they're here. And that's the reason right. why they're here to get the variance. Right. Because, but if we we turn around and make them split, it'd be an issue. Oh, it's not impossible. Right. But it's not impossible. But, but, but yeah, but the so possibility that we'd still have to come back with variance because yeah, they may going, they're come, we'll come right back on that. Or they'll be right back on the size lot. I mean, either you make your decision now or catch it later. Have any further discussion? I'd, I'd like to ask one more question. Um, you, you'd cited personal reasons in the case of uh, a divorced individual with custody. Is that legal custody? It's still in the works. They're not legally divorced yet, so it's that right now he does have legal custody. Okay. Any other further discussion? Motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, with stipulation, and the stipulation being, because the big point here is they're trying to keep his daughter in the school district. Right. I would move that this be approved as written with the stipulation that he has to have legal custody. If he doesn't get legal custody, this becomes null and void. Mm. Can we do that, Mr. Parrington? Put a stipulation on the barriers. I mean, 
Does it sound reasonable? Well, <clears throat> well, my I would, problem with that is this is a lot of money to have a mobile home yes, set up and, and, and put to be there, set up, and then and then him lose I, custody. Uh, that's the court's or issue. Get, but, well, that, I understand all that, yeah, but, but I would rather approach this and give him 24 months on this property to get his life in order or whatever he's got to do and find himself a place to move this mobile home that him spend five to eight thousand dollars put the mobile home on a lot and then get a judge that decides no the child's going to go live with mama or or what if or what even make it even more gray area what if they get joint custody right yeah he's so then he's back he's, he's messed over again so. mm -hmm. there's a lot of that, I, that I we limit it to the brother versus you know it turning into a rental property after the brother's gone or something like and, that. and we we've, we've been around this to uh, been around several yeah. times uh, on this that uh, you know we've put these trailers out there I, I, and, and they're nice okay they're uh -huh. nice. but they end up uh, being rental property and uh, and and I, I mean we're having a discussion here we're not I'm just and but here's a situation that you you can't put a stipulated time on it because we've done it before uh, but and my whole thing is is we have rejected these before with children when it hasn't been a true hardship case That's right. this is a temporary hardship that he's going through with a divorce this is not somebody who's disabled uh, permanently disabled so right. um, I have a problem issuing a variance on somebody who's got a temporary problem, hardship, versus a mother and son who we tell them because there's no existing hardship. You brought up the number 24. Is that 24 months? 24 or? months. That's two years. <coughs> now, I, I want the EA. Um, that's what I thought I'd better tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in fact, if I'm not mistaken. This is a discussion. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, there was a request, you know, by the council and all that when we had the FEMA going on with the trailers here that we do put a time stipulation yes. on a lot of things. You know, okay. I know this isn't that same situation, but they requested before for us to put time stipulations on things. Okay. You know, so this would be just something different, but not for the... If, if this is what is... I don't vote. So, I mean, if, if this is a stipulation that you want to put on it, make it a motion. Well, but my question is here... That's all well and good, but how do we enforce it? Because a temporary certificate of occupancy has its own set of problems. And if we make a stipulation that's not enforceable <coughs> by somebody, then what but good he's is He's got to enforce it. Yeah, and he's got neighbors that are... We have to figure are... out a way to do so. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's, that's really that's, our problem. That's the reason why I want to get That's our problem, really not your problem. Right, you know, exactly. We'll have to figure out how to do that. So... I'm going to make a motion that we approve it for the brother only for 24 months from the date it's moved on there. Okay. And 24 months later, he needs to be somewhere else. Is that acceptable? Because she's a making a motion. Okay. If but you're going to be the ones that are going to be living with it. Right. right, but right. It, it's not ever going to be rental property, and I mean, if it should take him longer than two months, I don't have a problem with him being there. I mean, two years. I don't have a problem with him being there longer than two years with the daughter going to school. But that's the problem. But we do. We do. Okay. So that's what we're saying. Okay. He's got a temporary hardship. Okay. He's got two years to get it straight. Well, even if he doesn't have straight and something comes up, you can always come back and apply. Right. Again. Okay. Right. You know, so that's not, you know. Okay. Well, I'll second to Ms. Desiree's motion based on the stipulations that she's put forward and the apparent acceptance by the applicants. Okay, so that'll be two years from the time the mobile home is put on the lot. That, do we, do we by the time, or? we'll know by the permits. Okay. You have to have a permit in okay. order to, but when you apply for that permit, at that, I don't know how you want to work that out because they have to have the permit prior to putting the trailer on the property, so whenever that when we issue the state, it'll be it'll be 24 months from the date we issue the certificate okay. of occupancy. Okay, sounds good. All right, we have a motion to accept with a stipulation. I'm not going to go through the whole stipulation again. And we also have a second. Any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, at this time, I did <clears throat> make another mistake, of course.
in the beginning uh, if you're here for 18.01 that's the retreat at ascension subdivision if you're here for that uh, that has been withdrawn from the agenda uh, so if you're not here for that then okay moving on uh, I know that this is 18.09 uh, and that's the same that's a that's just a misnomer I uh, understand and so therefore we're going to keep it on with the agenda uh, at this time, we're going to ask for uh, Steve Shirley, uh, the Jefferson Oak subdivision, and at this, it's 1809.07. Start yes. back. I think it's the last one. I think it's the last one. That was, there was a, when they numbered these, it was, <clears throat> numbers ended up being duplicated and couldn't go back in the system, so they had to announce. Yeah. This should be the one in order. Although the number ID number is not in order, okay, but that that number is still going to remain. <clears throat> that that will remain the number. Okay. Go ahead, sir. State your name, please. I'm Steve Shirey. Uh, I'm filing for a variance on a uh, building setback line that would not encroach upon encroach upon the uh, servitude. Uh, the reason for that, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a gigantic oak tree on the property. Uh, there should have been pictures given to you guys. Um, the oak tree is situated such that either A, you build behind it and you have issues, or B, you build in front of it and have issues. Um, for the reason of aesthetics, I would prefer the property face towards Jefferson Highway. Um, in order to do so, um, had an architect come out, do some preliminary measurements, and to be able to build that uh, that home on that lot facing there, I would need about 10 feet over. And if you look at the pictures, I'm sure they're in black and white, you can't really tell. Um, the property sits extremely high. Uh, if you are standing on the property from that elevation to the elevation of where the road comes into the subdivision is give or take a little six or eight feet, maybe more, maybe less, uh, but it slopes up. Um, the 10 feet that I'm requesting would only move the property to the edge of where the property already slopes. It does not get into the servitude. It does not get into anything that would really create any real issues. Any questions by any board member? Yes, sir. Um, it's really a magnificent tree. And that's certainly worthy of being saved. Uh, which begs the question, have you applied to have this tree put on the National Register? I have no idea how to go about that. We, we bought the property, and the reason we bought it, or one of the conditions of buying it, was to make sure that we'd be able to build a property on it. Um, at the time, we were told that we could, but I did not realize that we would have to get said variance. Um, but no, I have not looked into that. Uh, it's a beautiful tree. It really is. I think it'd make a nice home. And the thing is, if it's not me, it's going to be someone else coming before you to get the variance. Or, worst case scenario, someone's going to put the tree down. Uh, any further questions? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I like the tree myself. <laughs> and no, I'm not a tree hugger. <laughs> You can hug this one. I know. Yeah, you can put a big arm around that one. And yes, sir, I, 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 I sympathize with you on that one. So, so Mr. Sherry, is it 10 feet or 15 feet of variance? 10 feet. Okay. Um, it says but misunderstood on the front is written. Yeah. It, um, there should be a, a drawing, and it shows where uh, it would, would have gone from a 25-foot setback okay. to a 15-foot setback. Okay. Yeah, that that adds up to me finally. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I looked at it for a long time. My wife had to straighten me out. At this time, uh, do we have any further questions? If not, I'd like to go ahead and open up a public hearing. So moved. Second. Public hearing is now open. Anybody in the United States like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? No one? 
and be criticized close. forever for cutting the tree down. <laughs> uh, I move we close. Uh, Mr. Shirey, I do have. Let me close public hearing, please. Close public hearing. Second. Public hearing is now closed. Go ahead, sir. I'd, I'd like to chime in uh, about the tree uh, and s second what Mr. Dalton advised, and that is that. Uh, that's a live oak, and it's probably, from looking at the photo, at least 100 years old. And there are some benefits to having an arborist come out, taking a look at it, and get it, uh, getting it put on some type of register. Now, I say that sometimes the benefit are s is that you can't build uh -huh. near it. So <laughs> you have that. to tiptoe <laughs> through that. <laughs> But the arborist may also know contractors. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're a contractor, but uh, my experience is half the contractors will take all the excess lumber and build a fire underneath that tree, right. yeah, that, that and the tree's happen. gone six or seven years later. We, uh, uh, we've spent a lot of money extra to buy the property okay. and jump through hoops to make sure that we can build so on it. Good. in order to uh, preserve the process. Beautiful tree. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, we're going to give your pictures back, sir. Oh, that, that's fine. I got it. Okay. Some people get mad. Do we like to? Okay, man. That's great. I'll make the motion that we approve as written and take the setback from 25 down to 15. Second. And the reason for this, reason for this. The reason for this is to save the tree. Well, and it's in harmony with, with the it. rest of the community, and I don't see any detriment to the surrounding neighborhood. I love it. We have a second. Uh, yes, I'd second. Okay, we have a motion to accept as written. Uh, we also have a second. Any opposition? No opposition. Thank you. Variance is granted, sir. All right, next on the list is 1802.07. This is for John Chapman. Uh, this is Wayne Capital's Partners, LLC. State your name, please, sir. Uh, Good evening. My name is Jeff Wilson. I am here on behalf of the applicant, John Chapman. Um, today we are requesting two variances, the first being a reduction in the 20-foot buffer yard setback to 10 feet, uh, and we would like to put in the stipulation that we provide a 8-foot solid wood fence along the property line to pretty much give what the buffer yard is trying to do and that it's creating a buffer between the adjacent uh, residential use. The second variance that we're requesting is for the location of the off-street parking landscaping. Do I need to get a little further here to the mic? Yes, yeah, please. I, I hear you. I see uh, you straining. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Um, the second request is for variance of the off-street parking location of the landscaping, not quantity. Any questions by any board member at this time? What's the hardship in removing the landscaping? Uh, it's just not feasible the way the... Uh, feasible for who? For the development. The way the development code is worded, uh, a minimum of, 50, of 25 square feet of landscaping materials shall be provided within 10 feet of the adjacent portion of the paved parking lot. The width of the lot doesn't provide... So well, eliminating half of the development wouldn't solve your problem? Uh, it would actually eliminate all of the development. Or I, I guess, yeah, you could put parking on one side and okay. you have a landscape strip between your parking and the building. Okay. Any other further questions? So where would the, where would the land, I'm looking at the flat right here. Mm -hmm. Where does the code say the landscaping should be, and where do you propose that you're going to replace it at? It should be within the paved portions, within 10 feet of the parking spots. We propose putting it along the proposed detention ponds and along the rear and sides of the buildings. Is 
Isn't this right next door to the condominium? It's just north of Quarters at Dutchtown condominiums. Okay, and on the front on 73, there will be no landscaping. No, there There's will be landscaping. Be the buildings. There will be landscaping in that area. It's just the way the variant, the development code is worded. The, ver the landscaping should be within 10 feet of all parking. Oh. So it will be provided in that area, but not further west on the property. It, you can't, can't physically put it A lot of the landscaping you're proposing is in servitudes. Is that not correct? Along what? the rear of the building, that would be correct. We can put a lot of landscaping along the banks of the pond, the two ponds, and along the sides of the buildings and in the LA-73 area. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Follow me, sir. Go ahead. Where are the drain servitudes? Well, yeah, that's servitudes. what I'm trying to find out. It's not like that on here. We'll be discharging to an existing ditch uh, shown for the existing ditch. Oh, we don't have one as of yet. The, you know, that is the natural that drainage. This request may have some trouble because of that, because I don't know that we've got existing enough side setbacks for where the drainage servitude is going to be required. Not only that, I know this property, that existing ditch is not a parish maintained ditch in the middle there. The only parish maintained ditch is along 73. Mm -hmm. The rest is basically swalls that were created way back. Any other further questions? What are the size of these units? Uh, they're 30 by 50 and 20 by 50, as shown below the site plan. Any other further questions? This, if not, uh, no. let's go ahead and public hearing. Open up to public hearing. Public hearing is now open. Anybody like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request, by all means, come up and sign in. Approach the podium and state your name, please. I don't see any. My name is Stephen Smith, and basically i'm speaking on behalf of some of the homeowners that caught wind that something was going to be going next door to uh the quarters of dutchtown property are you proposing storage units is that what you're proposing to build office in the pond okay and that's kind of what what we what we heard and i guess the we're opposing it because um we are concerned that it's going to depreciate the value of the the condominiums right there um, and a lot of people are investors that are in there and of course you know value is important to them and one of the things that came up is being concerned about theft um, or, or bringing in you know the element having those those storage buildings right there uh, taking the chance on on bringing people around there that you don't really want although the quarters of Dutchtown is a gated community you can't stop anybody from from possibly breaking in and if they break into the storage units then there's a possibility they break into the to the uh, condos and that creates problem for the homeowners and it depreciates the value are you a current uh, owner of one of those condos I will be yes okay so you have it you're not you're not residing there now but, no, no okay no, no. well that's the reason why you didn't get a letter I was kind of wondering why you didn't get a letter right uh, usually everybody adjacent properties get a letter that we were going to have this tonight uh, I guess what I'm going to say uh, it would have went to the properties so uh, are you like I, I got to ask this question <laughs> okay. even though it's a stupid one sure uh, the uh, are you like you said you were representing everyone in in the condominiums. Just some of the buyers that that I know have bought, and the reason I know they bought is because I I, mm -hmm. I sell real estate and I've sold them to them. Oh, okay, okay. So you know I'm aware. So so you made them aware of the same situation. The ones that were not aware of it, uh, yes, uh, they are in in, in Connie's here. 
uh, as as potential, or she's going to be a homeowner, and yes. she's one of the people that you know has the concerns for okay. the storage buildings. Yes. Okay. The reason why I said because you do have homeowners association. Sure. And I want to know if you were representing that kind of organization. No, there's no home, homeowners association form yet because there's no. Uh, oh, and I understand. Right. I understand. I mean, it's just newly developed. Correct. No one's there yet, and my name is Connie Harrison, and I am buying a unit there, and I'm concerned that it's going to devalue because it's a residential. It's beautiful right now, and if we start putting commercial and taking the landscape in the way and becoming industrial right next to this, you know, beautiful area, I mean, that's my concern. Uh, is that it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, anyone else like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? Close it. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Public hearing now closed. Uh, do we have any further discussion on this? Well, I'd like to make mention that this zoning district is mixed use, which does include uh, some commercial. But the concern that I have on the front part of this thing. Your typical office storage unit layout, uh, 1,500 square feet, is proposing 1,100 square feet be used for storage and approximately 390 square feet for office. A 390 square foot office will hold X number of people and have X number of automobiles associated with it. Right. There's nothing that I know of that's going to prevent this so-called storage space turning into a giant office, which is going to have additional parking requirements, which are not provided for on this plat. I'm also concerned that uh, any drainage servitudes that may or may not be in existence are not shown on this plat, and therein, again, is another issue unto itself. End of my comment. Any other further comments? Well, my problem is drainage. Uh, this portion of 73, and then we're going to concrete predominantly this entire acreage with the exclusion of the retention ponds with very little to no green space left. Once again, the concrete isn't going to absorb the water. The water has to go somewhere. Um, I have a real issue with that your neighbors are going to be the ones who are going to be faced with water. And parts of 73 have flooded the entire road going underwater as it is currently. Um, I know that's not your problem, no, but... I'm, I'm the engineer on the project, so I, I'll let me yeah. go ahead and address your, yeah. your concerns. It, it is a problem for your neighbors, and it is a problem for the parish. So The reason we have the detention ponds is to address the increased surface area of, of concrete and buildings, impervious area that is being put on the site. The reason we are intending to discharge to the swale that goes through and turns into, I don't recall the name of the drainage body right now, but is to not send the water to LA-73, which has existing drainage problems. To clarify the intended use of this project, the front half is office storage, which is intended for your landscaping companies who, have, who need an office space to do paperwork, but really need more storage to bring in their trailer full of lawnmowers and everything, or your surveyors who, again, need an office for minimal paperwork but really need area to store their office related equipment. The rear area is intended for storage of RVs, boats, not your personal storage, <coughs> need to toss a couple of box and get them out of the attic kind of thing. The rear area will be gated off completely and will be accessible only by a keypad. But the front area will not be gated. The front area will not be gated because it will be you know, office. And the retention pond area, will it be gated or not? It will be enclosed with the rest of the storage okay. to minimize liability. Mr. Becknell, um, you said you were the engineer, so you 
uh, on yes. this project? Yes, sir. Okay, and then at an earlier question, you uh, when asked if what would happen if we kept you to the original ordinance of uh, the plantings in the parking lot, you said the project would not go through? It, it would not be financially feasible. Uh, so you're you're an engineer and yet you can't make this parking lot work. <laughs> it would not be financially feasible to the developer. I understand enough on what the developer's intent is to know that if half the units were lost, this project could not be made to financially work. So what we're talking about is you're asking for a variance to increase somebody's pocketbook. Because you just said it. To me, if, I, it's, if that's the, the way you want to look at it. I mean, to me, it just does not look like it goes to what's next door in harmony with the neighbors. That's one of the things that we look up at for hardship or within harmony of the neighbors. Here, you got a condominium unit, you know, roughly two hundred to four hundred thousand dollar condos next door that has a huge amount of landscaping. Okay, mm -hmm. and here you are, right next door, asking to remove the landscaping. Uh, yeah, you know, that's the, you know not quite. See, harmony we, within the neighborhood. I, I'm not asking to remove the landscaping. I'm asking to. I mean, you're asking to reduce it, but then you're also asking to put it in the servitude so that if any utility needs to come through, they got to rip it all out. Is that not correct? The, uh, you know, the point I would like to make is I hear what you're saying, and you're saying it's not economically viable uh, to develop it unless you can do this. Well, that's a self-imposed hardship. There is no pre-existing hardship here. And that's what we deal with. That's my hardship. point. There is no pre there's no pre-existing condition here. Any hardship is the fact that you want to build what you want to build. If you had built what is in accordance with the development code, you wouldn't be here before us and you could build in accordance with that. So you can put something on the on the property. But you're generating your own hardship here is my point. Right. Any other further discussion? We have a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, make a motion that this be uh, disapproved uh, in that it's a self-imposed hardship. They can utilize the property. They just can't do this uh, something on this scale and meet the development code. I second. All right, we have a motion to uh, disapprove, uh, deny as written. And we also have a second. Any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. Variance is just denied, sir. Next on the agenda is 1803.07. This is for Elton D. Bernard. Oh, it's on uh, Highway 44 uh, and Chick Duplessis Road. Let me see it. Let me see it again. Here's a staple together. You've got the wrong one. You threw the wrong one away. Yeah. Want to use mine? Yeah. <laughs> no, My name is Elton Bernard, and I'd like I appreciate the opportunity to uh, present my situation here and I'd like to give each one of you a little comment. I'm asking for a variance uh, in Chick to Plessis subdivision. Uh, it was originally uh, told me told to me that the variance was because of the original subdivision required uh, 16,000 square feet uh, for each house. However, I do have a map of when the original survey was, subdivision was uh, set up, and that was in uh, 1955, I believe it is. I don't know if it shows on there. And you notice there's lot one is quite large and lot 13 uh, if I can read that right, it's quite large. And my lot is lot 7 and 14 feet of lot 8. And if you notice all the rest of the lots, there are 66 lots out of 83 that are less than 6,000 square feet. So I don't think that the original plot 
requires uh, a lot of 16,000 square feet. Then the, uh, the lot I purchased is 71 feet wide and 200 feet in length. And I purchased it on April the 23rd of 1998. And the effective date of the current code by which I think we're being required to comply was June the 1st of 1999. So my personal understanding is that since it was purchased before the code was established, that it is, it the lot would be grad, uh, grandfathered in. The other considerations that I had is the State, State Department of Health issued me a permit for a waste treatment plant to add an additional house to this lot. The parish culvert section issued me a culvert permit to serve as a second driveway, another driveway for additional house. And then the parish office that issues um, addresses gave me uh, 13100 Highway 44 as an address for an additional house. So all of this kind of led me to believe that a permit could be issued for another house for this lot. So since the place of subdivision was established in January 10th, 1958, today it's a dilapidated area with many houses in rundown condition with at least three houses separate houses boarded up and un, 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 uninhabitable. There's been no new construction in this area in many years. So what I hope to answer tonight is what benefit or disadvantage would it be to deplace a subdivision to allow variance to, uh, of construction of a new house on, on the, to divide the lot and allow a new house and what positive or negative impact would it be on the owners to deny this variance. First, the benefits to the neighborhood, a new home with a landscape entrance would embrace, enhance the well-being of the entrance of the neighborhood. The intrinsic value of the subdivision's entrance would increase. The neighbors living in a new house with a better, would give a better sense of security than a feeling of a vacant lot. And much of the open ditch would be covered, thus contributing to the quality of the neighborhood. And property values surrounding, of surrounding houses would su be sustained and even increased. So I don't think there would be any negative impact upon the neighborhood to allow an additional house there. Uh, secondly, on the flip side, what would be the p positive or negative impact upon the owners if this variance is denied? One, the property would be wasted, never to be used for a gainful purpose to the parish for the owners, which means less taxes for the parish and less income for the owners. Uh, B, owners would be deprived of a portion of their planned retirement income, which would result in the need of senior citizen, senior citizen services that they could otherwise provide for themselves. And third, the funds to build this new home would de derive from the sale of property of like kind in Houston, Texas under the RS 1031 exchange rule. If we are permitted to build this rental property, we would not be subject to capital gains tax, and this would result in a savings to the owners of about $20,000. Uh, and the base cost of the home would start at the construction cost instead of the cost of the original Houston house. This would accrue to the advantage of the owners when the property is sold. <coughs> there is no positive impact will accrue to the owners if this request is denied. And, but the negative impact would be reduction of monthly income needed for drugs and care in the old age, the loss of future long-term care case capability. Sir, could you give me your summation, please? Well, it's, it's it right here. Uh, in other words, it's either my taxes to take care of my, my old age or the public taxes to take care of. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Has there ever been a variance on this before? No. Okay. I've never been here before for a variance on this. Okay. I was here last month on an issue for a church. Okay. Yeah. That's, why, that's, why, we, that's why we're all saying, now, wait a minute. For the <laughs> park overflow You've parking seen this in guy the soccer before? field. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We know okay. where you're at now. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, this is that house. Well, that church, <laughs> there's something wrong now, isn't there? But uh, go ahead, No, sir. the church is finished. Not built, but I mean the problem's finished. Okay. I'd like to open public hearing. Second. Public hearing is now open. Anybody would like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? Close it, please. Close so public moved. hearing. Public hearing is now closed. Any further questions, motions, discussions? Do you want to? Yep. Um, 
on the lot in the front, are you mainly going to sell it as residential? I know it's commercial, but you were talking about saying building another home on the front. Well, it's, it's for a rental property. Okay, so you want to build a home to rent out. It has a rental unit on it now. And okay. I want to put a second rental unit on it. I think you have a copy of a map that shows how yeah. it's been divided. Yeah, we, we've got right. it. Proposed to divide. Okay, so you just want to put a house on it, though. It's not going to be like a commercial for no, the corner no, or anything. Just a house. Okay. Any any further discussion? I'm going to make a motion that we approve this as written for the usage of a rental resident, well, a residence. <clears throat> I'll second that with that stipulation. We have a motion on the floor at this time to uh, approve as written. We also have a second. Any opposition? No opposition. Sir, your variance is granted. Thank you. Next on the agenda is uh, 1804.07, uh, for uh, Rhodes Enterprise, LLC. I'm looking at both of them. Go ahead, sir. State your name. Good evening. My name's Tony Rhodes, and we're requesting a variance for Lot 92 in Oaks on the Bluff uh, for relief on the side setback requirement. And the reason for that, sir? The uh, reason for that is. I have a client uh, that has a home, custom home design for that that lot already, and um, they need a little more of the width of that property. Uh, several months back, the parish elected for corner lots, from my understanding, to reduce them down to 12 and a half as a side setback requirement. I came to the parish and asked them about it. They told me yes, that was fine. So I told the client to go ahead and do this with their house plans. Now my client's $4,000 in the house plans, and we came back and they said, no, now you need to get a variance. So that's yeah, why I'm going to let, me, let, me, let me speak to that point. Uh, we did speak to that on T turnarounds and cul-de-sacs. This is a recurring problem with, with this board, and that is the, the attorney and I have talked about that, and we will be introducing uh, the appropriate change in the ordinance to uh, For this handle this lots. problem. That's correct. Now, is that for corner lots and T turnarounds or just T turnarounds? Well, T turnarounds necessar necessarily create corner lots to an extent because the way the thing's shaped with a T. And on T turnarounds and cul de sacs, we have reduced setback requirements because of the way they function. This is also always the same case on a corner lot. I guess my, my next statement or, or comment or question, however you want to put it, is this man is. is Saying that you told him that uh, it was okay, and I'm, I'm having no, a I didn't, problem. I didn't tell him it was okay. Not I, I, no, I, I did not tell him it was okay. At the I, time, I'm just, I, I believe the reason probably why I'm asking is because that we haven't we haven't got the problem resolved yet. We, no, we and definitely I think, don't need to be giving out information that doesn't exist. No, I think what happened was I believe that originally. I believe that originally everyone felt like we were going to deal with all corner lots at the same time. However, that's not the way it finally emerged. It was T turnarounds and cul de sac setbacks. We need to go back and amend uh, the rest of the subdivision ordinance to reflect those construction okay. standards. And that's, standard. in, that's in the process. That's in the process. Right. Okay. So perhaps this will be one of the very last ones you have to. Hopefully. <laughs> and I have another question for you. Is the 12.5 feet, is that in the existing language right now for T turnarounds? 12.5 is the existing in the T turnarounds and cul de sacs. Okay. That is the new language, and that's okay. in effect for about a month or so. Uh, Mr. Brad, you had a question? Motion to public hearing. Second. Public hearing now open. Anybody like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? Go ahead, sir. State your name. You know, I'm Nathan Spicer, and um, I'm coming up before the night later on the same issue, um, kind of uh, ironic. Um, but the same thing, I was told that uh, it, there were certain uh, parameters that you get 12 and a half foot servitude instead of 25, but certain lots weren't um, didn't weren't applicable to that. And so my lot is not applicable to that. Supposedly, I had to come get a variance as well. 
because basically, as you know, since in Paris, we're having the land is starting to dry up, and people are trying to get developers, whatever you're going to call it, as much density on these lots as, as on these developments as they can. And so, in some cases, they are making the lots too not deep enough. In, in this case, Oaks and the Bluff, most of the lots are 140 feet deep or less, and because of that. We're go we need to go with wider houses. Now, on the corner lots, they're typically running 85 to 95 feet wide. So if you take 25 <coughs> foot on the side setback and then 5 foot on the other side, basically you've got a 60, 65 foot wide lot, 140 foot deep. Um, and, you know, they're paying a premium for them. And so there's just not enough lot space. And now, you know, that they're now also, you know, it's 5 foot from the overhang, not just 5 foot from the, the brick wall. So you're really cutting another, you know, um, almost two, two and a half feet. So the lots are getting so narrow. So I think that um, that it needs to, needs to be approved for that reason. It's just the corner lots do make it a lot more difficult with having, you know, 30 foot of side servitude instead of everybody else has 13 or whatever. Okay. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, we're, we're dealing with that to, to answer that kind of that statement. Uh, we're, well, I think we're in a actually well long in the process of we're well rectifying long. that this situation so you won't none of y'all would have to appear before us because we've been dealing with this problem for a while uh especially with the uh the the cul-de-sacs and the t turnarounds uh go ahead sir uh, go ahead sir okay do we have any, anybody else in the audience like to speak in favor of or against close it most in the close public here any further questions? Well, I'd just like to make mention that this problem, and it is a problem, was created by the guy that laid out the subdivision. He did not allow enough room for the corner lots to have the double setback as required. And uh, I understand where you're coming from with all this, and yes, that's a problem, but the setbacks on the side are just as important where there's a street as it is on the front street. Uh, and, you know, if the parish wants to change the code to allow a 12 and a half foot setback for a side street, that's, you know, their prerogative. But uh, those setbacks are important. And yes, this is all about money, but the guy that laid this out created the problem, not you. That's correct. You're just a guy trying to build a house on it. That is correct. Within the thing. Any other questions or comments? Motion? Um, the one question I do have, is there a um, garage that's coming off the street? Right. The only part of the home that they want to build that actually will um, go into the setback is the garage area. Right, but what happens is 12 and a half feet is not really long enough to park a car if they want to park a car right outside the garage. Well, the 12 and a half foot is from the survey stake to the house. There's another 10 foot from the stake to the curb of the street. Okay, so there's another 10 foot grass right. between the curb. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. I'll That's make a not what this drawing shows me. This drawing says it's 12 and a half foot from the house and the sidewalk's the sidewalk. included. And here's the grass and then here's the curb. And here's the sidewalk. So they're going to be blocking the sidewalk with the car. Yeah. No. There's, there's a curve of the street, and there's 10 foot to the survey stake and sidewalk, and then 12 and a half foot. And Lake Vista is not a through street. Oh, it's no, just it's runs street right street beside that house. It's dead end. It's very unlikely that anything will continue off that extension. Yeah. Yeah. Dead end because of the way the property is laid out. I'll make a motion to approve this. As written, it's from the second. harmony of subdivisions and the other things we're trying to do. I second it. We have a motion to approve as written. And we also have a second. Any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. Variance granted, sir. Thank you, sir. Next on the agenda is 1805.07. Uh, this is for Rock Church. Yes, good evening. I'm Pastor Blake Melanson, the pastor of the Rock Church, and uh, we, we are requesting a variance on a dust-free parking area for our church that we're building, and we're asking for a two-year variance on it because of the cost of the... I have a, uh, a map right here. I'll show you. Our, our church is going to be about 
four to five hundred feet off the street. So to put put a dust free parking lot plus the driveway right now would just be as far as cost goes for us. This is the street right here, right across from the the uh, parish barn or public works as they call it now. And then our driveway's here, and it goes to the the building back here. So it's a it's a it's It'd be, it's going to be a lot of cost for us, but we feel like in two years we can have the money to go ahead and pave that. In fact, we want to pave it. Uh, our goal is to have a paved driveway with a nice entrance and a paved parking lot. But at this point, we're just asking for a two-year variance to comply with that requirement. Public hearing. That's fine. Public hearing. Anybody like to speak in favor of or against this uh, gentleman's request? Close public hearing, please. So Second. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, I have a question. question. Yes, um, are you saying that the driveway off of Church Point would also be dust free and not paved? Is it now? You're asking it, me? I'm, I'm asking your driveway. Is it, it currently paved? It's, it currently has limestone on it. Okay. The previous owner had limestone laid down the whole driveway mm -hmm. and the parking area that we're that we're going to use has limestone also because he, he had 18 wheels that used to work on them so it's all it has a limestone base already mm -hmm. so when we go to put paving or concrete in the in the future it already has a great base down for it okay but it, at this present time it's just limestone okay so it's church point road and then it starts limestone yes ma'am uh could the church afford to put an apron of so many feet of either concrete or some pavement currently so that rocks and limestone aren't currently pulled out onto church point on a regular basis before the 24 months well, I mean, we can we could definitely look into it, but there would be less traffic with our church there than there was if somebody was living there. And there were, there were worse people living there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the traffic that was going through there every day, because we meet on Sundays mm -hmm. and we meet on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. So there's only two times a week, basically, that there'd be tr cars there, mm -hmm. other than me, me be there in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Any other further questions? <coughs> okay. Uh, of course, public is closed so do we have a motion my my only issue is and i've brought this up before is approving these lots and things being pulled on and off public highways as people enter and exit um <coughs> Of course, he is offering up his own stipulation of 24 months to have the driveway complete, completed, and the parking lot paved. So, and it's currently already that way. Nice. So, um, given that, I would agree to go ahead and approve it as written with the stipulation that within 24 months, the driveway, I would say, definitely needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Absolutely. And then paved. So I would approve it. I'll second. We have a motion to uh, to approve as written. We also have a second with a stipulation. Any any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, Baroness Green. Next on the agenda is uh, 1806. This is for uh, East Creek Villa subdivision, track B and C. Come on, right? So far. Not even close. Let's see, this all together. Okay. I don't even think I have that. Paperwork has been very bad tonight. Uh, go ahead, sir. State your name. My name is Craig Corey. I'm representing the developer on this project. Um, we're asking for a variance of the building size for these two lots, um, 12,500 for track B and 19,500 for track C. Uh, the reason we're asking for it is we've been to DOTD, and they're only allowing us two driveways on Highway 44 um, so that we, we could break up those lots into smaller ones and get the square footage we need, but we're only going to be allowed two driveways on 44. So that's why we're asking for the van. Any questions by any member of the board at this particular time? 
No questions? Go ahead and open up a public hearing, please. Second. Public hearing is now open. Anybody like to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? Close public hearing, please. Do we have any, at this time, do we have any questions or any discussions? Do we have a motion? Do we know what's, why, where'd y'all come up with the figures for the square footage on the buildings? Because I don't see any some, building some plans. We've done some layouts um, just to, to see that it would work, and that's what we came up with. And that covers your parking and everything on these, this size yeah, lot? Yeah, we're not asking for a variance for parking at all. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Another possibility that I think right off the bat would be you could divide it up into three tracks and build three buildings, use two entrances, and ask for a variance for all the parking lot to be one common shared parking lot would seem like preferable to me. That's up to you. But he'd have to restate that. Yeah. Did you understand what he said? Yeah, I understand what he said. I'm okay. not sure if that. Do you want to continue? I'm going to ask you a question. Do you still want to continue with this variance? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do we have any further questions? Uh, we've already closed. I have an answer to your question. Well, he's a developer. Oh, you are a developer. Okay. Yeah. By all yeah. means. Maybe you can shed a little light. Yeah. Yes, please. State your name, too, please. My name is Ross Berthelot. I'm the uh, owner and developer of this tract. And uh, we thought about doing three tracks, and we could get 30,000 square feet, I guess. 10,000 on each track would be the commercial crossroads, crossroads commercial allowable square footage. The problem is with DOTD, and we've gone very far with uh, Dwight Fox at uh, the state DOTD, they're only allowing us a right in, right out on the south entrance to that the large track, track C. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have full access. We're only going to have one full access uh, from Highway 44 into these two tracks as it is. If we split it up into three tracks, first we'd have to end up doing three separate buildings to get the same square footage. Uh, hardship. This cost me more money, but not a hardship. But the real hardship has been in the traffic situation right there. We're just something not allowed enough entryways. They don't want to impede traffic any more than they already have over there. So we've agreed to the right in, right out on the south side and only one full access into the four acre track that we have now. From 44. Right. So we feel like with the, with the one true uh, ingress and egress, two lots is, is fair. Any other further fair. questions? Any discussions? We have, I'm looking for a motion. I want to move that we approve as written. Um, I think that uh, I've had my own dealings with DOTD, and the property, the usage, um, I think it's the only way really to maximize usage of these two lots. And if they're not going to have to have a variance on the parking and other issues, um, it's already part of the plan. Um, I don't see that the size of the building, um, so if it's going to fit and they can fit the parking in there. I don't think it's going to be an impediment to the surrounding area. Surrounding area. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion to approve as written. Uh, we also have a second. Uh, any opposition? No opposition. Motion carries. Uh, variance is granted, sir. Next on the agenda is 1807.07. .07. This is on the bluff first filing, lot number 34 for special construction. Hey, I'll do it. Um, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, I have a, a client, kind of the same issues came up earlier. Um, he after the hurricane, he went to Iraq. Um, he's in the reserves or whatever. And his wife, it was the civil service in New Orleans, and she went to Washington. Well, they've been working on a house for six months in Zachary. And uh, they got transferred to New Orleans, but they don't want to live in New Orleans, so they're wanting to live in Ascension Parish. 
and the kind of the same issue is um, a lot of the corn lots have been approved to, you know, the 12 and a half, I really only need like five feet of the side servitude to move my, it's just a little too wide to fit on the house, to, to fill in the lot. And so I've been working for about six months and they're, you know, a little frustrated trying to find something and stuff. So that's why I'm here tonight to ask for, you know, a five, I think it's four or five foot variance to um, accommodate the house plan on the, on the lot. You say four or five. Which is it, four or five feet variance? Um, it's on. You have it on sheet. I've been through a lot last week. I had uh, surgery. I'm sorry, it's four. Okay. Two weeks ago, my wife had surgery last night. She's at the hospital right now. Oh, I had to come, oh, so I've been through a lot. So it's kind of. And we're, we're trying to get too, you out so. of here. <laughs> Any questions by any board member at this particular point in time? Sir, you understand that this is to the eve of the building, not the foundation. Correct. Correct. So I give him. Best to be right. within these dimensions. I give him the five foot. Mm -hmm. Any other further questions or comments? Questions open up public hearing. So moved. Second. Pub public hearing is now open. Anybody want to speak in favor of or against this gentleman's request? Close public hearing, please. Uh, public hearing is now closed. Uh, I make a motion that we give him five foot setback. Uh, I think it's in harmony with the neighborhood. I don't find it as a hardship. It's a corner lot. We already know we have issues with them. We have a second. I'll second that. We have a motion to uh, to accept as written. We yeah, also have a five foot instead of the four foot. Uh, five foot instead of four foot. I apologize that. So just in case. Yes, thank you. you okay. An any uh, any opposition? Nope. No opposition. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, with the new business, we've already conducted that. Uh, next one is all adjourned. My name so. is Ashiel Denew, and I was sent a letter about that check. I think so. Let's see, what was this? You hear about Rock Church? Okay, that's the one we talked about a few minutes ago. And when they were saying open for public hearing, that's when you wouldn't have needed to have come up and made a comment about it. <laughs> you well, just that's want fine. That's, fine. Just your that's just your notification. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, any any other uh, anything else? We're looking at uh, next on agenda is adjourned. Thing, what is the limits on adding to a building? I got a building across the street from the barn right there by the church. Talk to him. Right there, you that gentleman right there. Let's do half of the total square foot. Motion to adjourn. Of the Second. building. Motion to adjourn. Any opposition? No opposition. We are adjourned.